What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the honeymoon is over for AEW, man. AEW is caught in, uh, I guess you could say, a little bit of uh, flack from some of the fans on social media of just what happened this past week with the AEW championship match, how it, short it was. There's some people that agree with how it was booked. There's other people that don't agree with it. Apparently there's some backstage turmoil. People are, you know, going into business for themselves on promos. It seems like there's a lot of things that's going on with AEW and not of it not a lot of it it's positive so we're gonna see what wrestlemania has to say about this on uh his video man appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel man road to 100k and let's get right into this one for themselves backstage heat dissatisfied wrestlers going into business for themselves backstage heat dissatisfied talent backstage fights clearly the honeymoon is over for all elite wrestling but mm -hmm. is the company headed for wcw territory and some people have been saying what happened with the cm punk and uh John Moxley match is WCW-esque. Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at why the WCW honeymoon is over for AEW. Time. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an on-wrestling channel, Incredible. Well, go subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Well, it all started off so well. AEW's 2019 debut was a breath of fresh air wrestling fans and wrestlers alike were looking for. Mm -hmm. The first national wrestling promotion since WCW folded in 2001 and one that promised to do things differently. Booking a combination of indie darlings, veteran stars and up and comers with plenty of potential. And not only that, but AEW would book the product intelligently, focusing more on athletics than over the top storylines that insulted the fans' audience. And for a while, it worked. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but it worked very well. AEW produced must-see television, fantastic matches, and pay-per-views that over-delivered. Ratings for Dynamite were so good that it crushed the WWE's attempt to stymie it by pitting NXT against it, mm -hmm. so much that Warner Media extended AEW's con. And that was the thing that NXT, in my opinion, they made a mistake. They shouldn't have not trying to be. They shouldn't have tried to compete with AEW instead of just kind of focus on what they had because i feel like when they were trying to compete with aew i feel like that's when things kind of dipped in like overall quality in a sense of they're trying to compete instead of just doing their own thing and letting people kind of just you know organically you know support them and once they went i believe it was at the same night as aew they tried to compete on that front i don't think it I'm not sure if it, it, it really worked for them in the long run. But overall, man, I, it's competition is good to have, especially when it comes to wrestling. But sometimes you got to know that you don't have to compete with someone. Instead, just kind of keep doing your thing. People will gravitate to it because you're competing with something new and fresh. And people wanted to see what AEW had to offer. Contract with a bump in pay. Behind the scenes, reports indicated that talent got along with veterans lending their support to younger stars and AEW working to build new stars. AEW was going to show the wrestling world that a promotion could treat its wrestlers like more than cattle and give the fans an entertaining product that delivered their money's worth. Now, there's no denying that AEW gave its fans a strong product, but there's also no denying that the first national promotion since 2001 enjoyed a lengthy honeymoon period. Both fans and critics, with occasional exceptions, gave the promotion a pass on things like the nebulous status of its executive vice president, as yes, what exactly does that mean, the uncertainty as to whether AEW's wrestlers were treated as independent contractors or employees, and AEW's mediocre video games division. But soon enough, there were signs of trouble. Even during the pandemic, AEW thrived with its fans enjoying a distraction from lockdowns and the company mm -hmm. holding the financial line. However, there were signs of trouble, including Tony Khan's subtle assumption of full control of AEW's booking from its vice presidents and the growing sense that Khan was signing any free agents from the WWE, despite earlier statements that he would be particular about who he signed. Mm -hmm. Signing people such as Paul White and Mark Henry may have given AEW a small pop, but so far they've delivered nothing in the long term. But well, there's been many problems as number one talent overload and, and i think a lot of people have been starting to see like 
he was bringing in a lot of the ex WWE guys that people wanted to see get a chance, but as soon as they got there, they just kind of got lost in the shuffle. For example, for example, Brian Danielson, when he got into AEW, he was literally the hottest thing. When he turned heel, it was fantastic. It was great. It was, I, I think people were loving it. Then he, of course, he ended up getting injured and stuff like that, but he doesn't have the same momentum. As when he came in, I, he doesn't have it. He he should be at the top of the card, in my opinion. I doesn't feel like he's been at the top of the card as of recently. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing with some other talent that have come in, and initially there's the hype for it, but then like you don't really see them either much on TV or they're not in like meaningful stuff. So they kind of fall down the card, and it becomes one of those things of how many people. Can Tony Khan get from WWE for them to be over for about a good couple weeks? And then they just slide down the card and you don't really see much from them. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's really, I guess you could say, beneficial for the company as a whole. Keep getting these ex-WWE talent only to not really utilize them because you already have talent there that need to get utilized as well. If that makes any sense. I'm all for talent getting over and getting shown on television. Maybe opportunities they weren't probably going to get in WWE. Um, but at the same time, I don't want them to come there to be over for like a couple weeks. And then they just disappear into obscurity, you know? Now, in fact, Tony Khan seemed to go into hoarder mode when it came to signing talent. With the WWE making drastic cuts to its roster, mm -hmm. Khan now had the proverbial pick of the litter when it came to talent. Yep. Now, to his credit, he signed some major stars, including CM Punk and Brian Danielson. Mm -hmm. too, too many wrestlers, not enough TV time. Kind of what but I was while just AEW's roster continued to grow, its television time remained static. AEW's Rampage program added an hour to the cable TV, but Tony Khan's decision to book up and coming stars for the most part quickly established it as a B-show and yep. deprived fans of seeing their favorites and new arrivals. Number 3. Damaged Goods now, As popular as they are, Brian Danielson and CM Punk are examples of two wrestlers who were damaged goods. Danielson's past medical problems are well documented, as is the injury that led to his first retirement, and his recent injury suggests he could be one injury away from permanent retirement. While CM Punk's injuries aren't believed to be extensive as Danielson's, his foot injury is a reminder that he's 43 and not the same wrestler he was when he left the WWE in 2014. Number 4, That's Cody good, Rhodes' exit. That's a good, you know, a good uh, little acknowledgement there. Like I was saying, Daniel, Brian Danielson's injuries kind of slowed down his momentum and then them kind of putting him with the group of the, the Blackpool Combat Club. It was cool in theory, but he kind of gets lost in the shuffle because, you know what I'm saying, like he's in a group with other talents and other personalities. And then you got to also consider when the older you get, the more likely your body is susceptible to injury. So you can't recover as quickly. So, you know, having these guys like CM Punk at the top of the card and he unfortunately get hurt, that could be a detriment to just, you know, what you're trying to uh, show for the company as a whole. So. What happened between AEW and Cody Rhodes? Well, Cody has kept silent on what led him to walk away from the promotion. He played a large role in getting off the ground. But even before his exit, there were rumors that the American Nightmare wasn't even happy. Number 5. MJF's Complaints hmm. now, The biggest warning sign was MJF's vocal complaints about being underpaid compared to ex-WWE talent. While he received a raise after his initial signing, he was still being paid less than the other former superstars, including Mark Henry. That's Given crazy. his spot in the upper card and arguably the main event, it's easy to see why he felt he was owed more, but Tony Khan wouldn't even budge. Despite the belief among some fans that MJF and Khan's beef was an elaborate work, that doesn't seem so. Number six. Yeah, I, I do think there's some a lot of truth to what he was saying, bro, and it's crazy. MJF is so dearly missed. He... he <laughs> He was the guy that you wanted to see get his ass kicked. He was that good. So I, I don't know what they do with him. I believe his contract doesn't end until 2024. But I'm I'm telling you this now. If Tony Khan lets him slip away and he lets him go to WWE, ran by Triple H now creatively, they have dropped. They that's That's a generational talent. You do not let go. You pay him. You know what I'm saying? You you pay him handsomely because he's, bro, he, he, bro, he makes you feel. He gets wrestling. He's fantastic. 
he knows how to get you to buy in to wanting to see him get his ass kicked, man. Buying Ring of Honor. Now another problem that is overlooked is Tony Khan's decision to buy Ring of Honor. While Khan scored the highly desirable Ring of Honor tape library, his efforts to re-establish the promotion has been shaky. Mm -hmm. Booking Ring of Honor's pay-per-views in AEW have taken a toll, with Khan having to delegate some of its booking to others. Number 7. Tony Khan plays the long game. But one thing Khan may have going for him with his many signings is that he may intend to use them in Ring of Honor if he can arrange for TV time for the show. The problem of course is that he hasn't landed a TV deal and he has a large roster mm -hmm. with little time to work. There's also no guarantee that Ring of Honor will succeed, although Ring of Honor is not owned by AEW. Well, what other problems have arisen? Well, AEW's backstage bedlam. Well, whatever the causes and their influences on the product, AEW is not a big happy home for wrestlers and, and nothing resembling a paradise. Here are some of the major problems the promotion has experienced with backstage bickering and brawling. The first is CM Punk. Yep. For a wrestler who seemed like such a huge signing, Punk has turned into a major pain in the ass. Rumor has it that Punk is difficult to interact with, which is why Hangman Adam Page insinuated Punk isn't in the company to help it, but to help himself. Mm -hmm. Punk's response in calling out Page when he knew he couldn't respond was seen as Punk's receipt and led to outsiders like Booker T and Freddie Prince Jr. hinting that Punk's backstage reputation was much different than how his fans see him. Mm. The rumor that Punk threatened to walk out on the 17th August Dynamite evoked memories of Punk walking out on WWE, leading Damn. some to wonder if Punk is a prima donna. Another was and yeah, man, I, I don't I don't know how true these reports are, but uh, definitely, um, the, you know, I did see that he was planning on potentially walking out of AEW. And it's like, I don't know what's going on here. I can't really confirm or deny, but the reports don't sound good. It doesn't put CM Punk in a good light. I'll say that it does not. It, it, it gives him that entitlement. It gives him that 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 that. I guess you could say the vibe of someone that feels like they're bigger than the, the business themselves. And I hope that's not the case. I hope these are just rumors and this is not true. Because, you know, I do like CM Punk. But if, if it comes out that he, you know, is trying to leave AEW, walk out on AEW or whatever the situation is, then it, it it's like, okay, some of us could somewhat empathize with what you did uh, in WWE and how they treated you. This will be like, all right what's going on here you know what i'm saying now we may have to start questioning you integrity wise on how you feel like you know what's your what's your real i guess gain in this business was the eddie kingston sammy Guevara altercation mm -hmm. now another I anecdote dealing with backstage too. bickering involves something beyond trash talking in this case a reported allocation between sammy Guevara and eddie kingston Fightful Select recently reported, rumors among talent that we've heard about said that Guevara and Kingston had developed heat and it evolved into an altercation. The web backstage was that Guevara made a comment about Kingston's physique and Kingston took a swing at him. Fightful later provided more details with the report hinting that Guevara is difficult to work with. The report noted that Guevara didn't have people exactly angling to work with him after his feud with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Furthermore, Guevara called Kingston a fat piece of shit in a promo for the match at All Out, mm -hmm. a promo which later was edited out. Kingston reportedly felt that the promo would make Sammy look bad because Kingston was going to win the match and Guevara would look bad by being beaten by, well, in his words, a fat piece of shit. The Fightful Select reports Kingston shouted at Guevara and Sammy smiled, leading to Kingston pie-facing him. But Kingston responded, You know the truth, I wouldn't lie, I was wrong for being unprofessional. That is the blind fact. He did what he did, and the public can judge that, but I know for a fact I was wrong. Now, this fact could lead to their rumored pay per view match being cancelled, another sign of behind the scenes bickering affecting the on air product. But it's also been reported. Hey, well, at least Eddie Kingston was man enough to admit when he was wrong, and that's what I can appreciate. If you make a mistake, be man enough to be like, yeah, I messed up. I was unprofessional. You know what I'm saying? I know where I messed up at. That's the one thing I can take positively out of that situation. I'm sure they're probably past it. But as long as you can admit when you're wrong, that's all that matters. Reported that Thunder Rosa is a heat magnet. A current AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa is reportedly persona non grata with at least two stars, which has led to rumors that the injury which kept her off all out was a cover story to let the heat on her die down. According to the Voices of Wrestling podcast, Thunder Rosa and Dr. Britt Breaker are mortal enemies. Yeah, they don't there like are each also other. rumors circulating that Jamie Hayter has a strong dislike for Rosa, which may be due to Rosa accidentally breaking her nose during a match. One story circulating is that Rosa hid in the bathroom after the match, fearful that Hayter would beat her up for real. 
While PW Insider reports Rose's injury is legitimate, taking her off TV to let the heat die down would be yet another sign of the company losing control backstage and its product ultimately suffering. But are things going to get worse? Well, is the morale going to get any worse? I hope it doesn't get worse. potential factors that could worsen the situation? The first being the grass looking greener in the WWE. Mm -hmm. Although Tony Khan has stated he has many AEW stars locked down to long-term contracts, fans have heard rumors of AEW stars rethinking their options. The next that Triple H is in control. One of the reasons WWE superstars left the company was their was disgust with the WWE's booking and what they saw as Vince McMahon's antiquated ideas about what makes for entertaining wrestlers and the types of wrestlers fans want to see. Mm -hmm. If recent weeks are any indication, Triple H, who replaced McMahon in the creative department, has a different vision. So far, it appears that wrestlers who would get a good push from Vince McMahon are just who Triple H sees as the future of the company. AEW wrestlers who felt as if they had no chance in hell of getting over during Vince's reign may now see things different with yep, Triple H. That's, that's a real Number possibility three, a too. The bidding war goes both ways. Or will the WWE be willing to pay the big bucks to sign AEW talent? Well, that's a story that's been going around ever since USA and Fox executives supposedly expressed interest in the WWE signing talents like MJF and Wardlow. Mm -hmm. While potential WWE signings will want to remember that the WWE normally reserves the right to end any contract after 90 days, the lure of a large payday may be enough. A bidding war seems likely, although AEW may not have the resources it needs if our next talking point plays out, as will Warner Discovery keep AEW? A one problem that may trouble AEW wrestlers is whether Warner Brothers Discovery will keep AEW around when its contract expires. As we've discussed before, even if the company wants to retain AEW, they may not give them an increase in their deal, which would likely affect AEW's ability to keep talent and sign new talent. But mm. well, there you have it, folks. Why we think the honeymoon is over? That's, that's... He brought up some very interesting points in this video. I know the old Triple H and me getting controlled and maybe some of the talent actually wanting to go back to the WWE because they know Triple H will probably take better care of them. That could be a possibility. I Like I said before, if I'm Tony Khan, I do not let go. I don't let go of Wardlow, and I don't let go of MJF. You cannot lose those guys, at least for sure, MJF. He's a star. He is a made man. People in WWE probably have seen that legendary promo and probably seen a lot of legendary promos with him and CM Punk. You, you don't let him go. And... I still think he could work in WWE because I'm sure they would let him. He probably wouldn't be able to curse as much, but MJF doesn't really need to curse as much to get a point, get across his points and promos. Like, he's a generational talent. You don't let go. And I'm telling you now, if they end up parting ways, WWE will pay MJF top dollar, top dollar to get him in that program. They'll pay top dollar for Wardlow too. So I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping things get better with AEW. Um, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. But as of right now, they are kind of on shaky ground. And a lot of points he bring up are pretty good points. Pretty valid points. So comment down below. Let me know. How do you guys feel about AEW? Do you feel like it has a chance to get better? Are you guys liking what the current product is? Are you guys disliking what the current product is? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all love and support. Road 2. Honey K, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.